Unleash the power of knowledge and connect with the heartbeat of the African diaspora. Download our African Diaspora News Channel app now on Google Play and Apple App Store. Stay informed with authentic and diverse perspectives, breaking news and cultural insights. Immerse yourself in a community that celebrates unity, resilience and progress. Experience the vibrancy of the diaspora at your fingertips. Don't miss out. Empower your perspective today. Search African Diaspora News Channel and join the conversation. The sad reality of most African countries is the fact that we import food. We rely on other countries to feed our people. Even though the weather that God has given us is enough, is more than enough to help grow the seed, help grow anything and everything that we want. But unfortunately, we're so dependent on importing the wheat, importing sugar, rice. Now we are at the mercy of this nation's hands, this nation's that could stop at any given moment and we will be stuck. That happened, by the way. That was our reality when COVID hit. A lot of African countries panicked because we relied on countries like Ukraine to feed our people. But now leaders like Ibrahim Traore want to change that. This is what he said about food sovereignty addressing his people. We wanted to come and say hello and see what you are doing here because we launched this initiative with the Minister of Higher Education. You are the pioneers of this initiative. And recently I asked for your complete list and I was able to see the localities where you want to settle for the rest of your program and the specializations you have been trained in. So we will contact the mayors of your different desired areas. I saw that everything is around 2-3 hectares desired. So we will of course support you with boreholes so that you can do this full time. And we will support you with the first kit, fertilizers, seeds and everything you need. But we also want you to be very soon the instructors. What you have learned, other people will come to work with you to learn, and so that we can broaden the base of this youth agribusiness. So congratulations to you. It took a lot of courage to accept leaving the benches and then come to learn something practical so that you can establish yourselves in it. Many people cannot understand, but it is sure that being here, you have learned the stories of many other people who have left and who have come to make their lives here, who have nothing to do with someone who works in the administration or in an office. Honestly, there's no excuse for us to be dependent on them because we have everything that we need here. All we need to do is grow our food. And the way this modern generation, especially this day and age, we believe that agriculture is not that important for some unknown reason, when in fact it should be one of the main pillars of, for a country to grow because one, you're feeding yourself, two, you're helping your environment, three, you're also exporting and making money off of it, right? These nations that are selling us food are making money. They're getting their money while we are losing money. So. Agriculture is extremely important and agriculture needs to be marketed to this generation in a better way. This reminds me of a girl, a young lady that said it's time to show our people that agriculture could be sexy. If I find her video, I'll add it right here. Okay, so we want to close it at this point. But if you feel you have a very burning issue, just one burning issue. Yeah, this is a copy by, if you can have the camera, this is done by FYL. If you show this to a young people, a young person, a young woman like me, and say going to agriculture, they're going to go into it. Definitely not. I told the World Bank the same thing. If you want to make agriculture attractive, if you want to make it sexy, start by publishing it. Get a young person who's attractive, put them on this picture. I said this in Harare last year, to say, can we try to make agriculture sexy? This organization, the UN, the FOA, whoever is involved in the agriculture sector, the advertising, whoever you are, make agriculture sexy. 
this is the beginning point of making it attractive to the young people. Right. If you, the organizer, the frontiers, the people who are supposed to lead us are putting such pictures, what are you sending to a person, a young person from the village? You pick this picture, I'm like, oh, this is what we're living. But if they see a young person here, very attractive like me, and you put me here, <laughs> Even the young men in the village, they'll be like, wow, I want to be like her. I mean, where am I going to find this woman? I, let me join agriculture. I mean, this is practical. That's what we need to be, to be talking about. So please, my request is that next time we're going to have such a conference, whatever is coming up, uh, you can look for me on Facebook, Tamara Happy Face Kaunda. Put my picture there and say she's a farmer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and a medical doctor, yeah? Uh, well, I, you, know, in, you know, most people, they like to see me. Oh, don't look at like, like, like she's swimming. She's a doctor. No, I want to be called a farmer. Right. Because the problem we have in Africa is hunger. Mm -hmm. We don't need drugs. I work in a hospital, and I can guarantee you 80% of the diseases, why we're losing young people is because of poverty. So why then can't we give them the nutrition they need instead of the drugs? That's my switching from me medicine to agriculture. So that's the what we should be looking at. Another thing, uh, she's from Singapore, I'm from Zambia. The borrowing rate in Zambia is about 35% to 40%. You, you can say, yes, I don't have, you know, I don't want to go to the bank or whatever. No, I've tried going there, but why should I create, to make a such a suicidal decision to go and borrow at a 40% rate? It's impossible. I want to go to the government to borrow. They say, no, you need to work for the government for two years. But I need the project running. I've got people following me. They need to come to the farm and see what I'm doing. So funding, we're not looking for charity. Like I was quite offended by the doctor lady who said, no, uh, our family is not a charity. Yes, we're not looking for charity. Mm -hmm. But if you can give me uh, $10,000 at a rate of maybe 5%, 2%, like the Chinese come, they come with a lower percentage, and they come and invest here and they beat us, I cannot compete with her even if she came to Zambia mm. because she borrowed maybe from Singapore at a lower rate. But look at me in Zambia, 40%, that's suicide. Right. So we can talk and talk and talk, but let's create an enabling environment for the African youth mm -hmm. because we can't have so much vast land, yet we are languishing in poverty. Netherlands cannot export to Africa if they don't have, if they don't feed their own people. Yes, I'm happy the young people are exporting, but why are we leaving our young, our people? Why are they dying? African graves are the richest because we've lost so many young people due to poverty and hunger. So we need to really critically look at agriculture as the oxygen for the, for economical in Africa. It should not be a backbone. I can break my backbone today and I can live on. But if I don't have oxygen, I can't live on. Live. So agriculture should be the oxygen of the economy in Africa. Thank you. It is extremely important for this generation to understand that we need to feed ourselves. First, you need to feed your people and then everything else comes next because the reason why we are in this situation in the first place is because people are hungry. And when you're hungry, you're not thinking straight. If you don't have food for today, all you care about is getting that food for tomorrow. And our politicians knows what they're doing. They'll go ahead and promise the person that is really hungry rice for that day for his vote. And that is one of the reasons why they keep us where we're at because we will continue the cycle of being dependent. We need to first grow our food, even as individuals. We need to feed ourselves. We need to understand how it works. And then we can now think about making money by exporting it, scaling it up. But we need to start somewhere and that somewhere should be learning how to grow our own food and then we can think about tapping into the market anyways fam let us know down below what your thoughts are about what president ibrahim traore said i am ungel zalalem i'll see you on the next one